So now we're going to move on to having a look at Bayes' theorem. So Bayes' theorem is another way that we can find conditional probabilities. In the first year of the course, we had a look at conditional probabilities, which remember are written like this, and that means that the probability of A given that B has already happened. And we had a look at how to do this with two-way two -way tables and Venn diagrams using this equation. Now, the issue that comes across with this is if we have more than one category or if we are given the information in different ways, it can be difficult to use this formula, and that's why we have Bayes' theorem. So, if we have the probability of uh, D given T, this is the way that we would have figured out in the first year. But we could also use Bayes' theorem. Now, in the formula booklet, this is the version of Bayes' theorem that is given. This is on page 5 of the formula booklet. Um, what it's important to remember is that what this symbol here means is that this is a capital sigma and this means sum. So that means to add together all the different categories that we have. I'm not going to talk about too much to do with the formula, but you can see here how it can be extended to having more than two groups. The reason why I'm not going to talk too much about the formula is that it's much easier to see the formula in practice. And as I said, you're given this formula here, in your formula booklet on page five, it's just learning how to use it. So for the example, we've got in Orange County, 51% of adult males. It doesn't take too much advanced math to deduce that there's 49 females. This is living in a very black and white world, not like the real world where we only have two genders. So here we have our gender where we're saying that uh, there's only male and females and as I said not relating to real life usually it would now have to specify um, so we have 51% males and 49% females so one adult is randomly selected for a survey involving credit credit card usage and we're trying to find the probability that the selected person is male. Well, that's easy. That's just our 51%. For part B, though, we find that it was later learned that in the selected survey subject was, a sm was smoking a cigar. So now we're going to have a separate, ca separate category, which is smoking. 9.5% of males are known to smoke cigars, whereas 1.7% of females is known to smoke cigars. Based on data from a subsequent uh, substance abuse and mental health service administration. So now we're trying to use the additional information to find the probability that the selected subject is male. So the reason why I've done it in a table like this is that you could do it in a Venn diagram, but I'm just writing down the basic information and this way I can make sure I've got things the right way around. This first categorization here should always add up to 100% and these will not add up to 100% in most cases. Like I said, if you get confused by the table, you can just draw yourself a Venn diagram and do it off the Venn diagram. So... We're trying to find the probability that given that they were a smoker, we're trying to find the probability that they were male. Okay, so remember that's written this way that round. Using Bayes' theorem, that means that we're going to do the probability that they were male times the probability that they are a smoker given that they are male divided by the probability that they are male times the probability that they are smoking given that they are male. Notice that that's exact same as what's on the top. Plus the probability that they are female times the probability that they are a smoker given that they are female. Now all of these are actually already written down here. We're just going to substitute them into the correct place. So the probability that someone is male is 0.51 times the probability that someone is a smoker given that they are male, which is 0.095, 
divided by the probability that someone is male, which are 0.51, times the probability that someone is a smoker, given that they're male, which is 0 0.095, plus the probability that they are female, which is 0 0.49, times the probability that they are a smoker, given that they are female, which is 0 0.017. So now we're going to put that into our calculator. That's also why these newer versions, the very, very old versions of the calculator, you don't get the top and the bottom fraction like this. So it's good. It's make sure that your calculator does have it like this. It'll make it a lot easier. So we've got 0.51 times 0.095 divided by 0.51 times 0.095 plus 0.49 times 0.017. So the probability that given that they are a smoker, that they are male, is 0.853, or 85.3% if you wanted to keep your answers in the same form. So I'd now like you to pause the video and give the now you try question a go. Be careful this time because there are more than two categories. So hopefully you paused the video and you gave the now you try question a go. So here we have an, airlift, an aircraft emergency location transmitter, an ELT, is a device designed to, to transmit a signal in the case of a crash. The alt gauge manufacturing company make 80% of the ELTs. The Bryant company makes 15% of them and the chair in the, and the charter com, charter company sorry make the other five percent of these. The ELTs made by Alter Gauge have four percent rate of defect. The Bryant ELTs have a six percent of defect, and the char, charter ELTs have a nine percent rate of defect which helps to explain why Charter have the lowest market share. If an ELT is randomly selected from the general population of all ELTs, what is the probability that it was made at the Alt Gauge Manufacturing Company? So that is just 80%. Now this information I wrote down whilst I was reading the question the first time, and you can see that as soon as I was seeing it, ELTs is what we're looking at, 80% of them were made by A, 15% of them by B, 5% by C. Then we were looking at defects, 4% of them were made by A, 6% by B and 9% by C. Now I'm just going to try and move these over to the next page so you can see what I've done. There we go. So you can see there, I've just copied these over from the previous page. So if a randomly selected ELT is tested and found to be defective, what is the probability that it was an alt gauge manufacturing company? So this is the probability that it was A, given that it was defective. So that means using Bayes' theorem, we'd have the probability of A times the probability that it was defective given that it was A, divided by the probability of A given the prob times the probability that it was defective given that it was A, plus the probability of B times the probability that it was defective given that it was B, plus the probability of C times the probability that it was defective given that it was C, which gives us 0 0.8 times 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.8 times 0 0.04 plus 0 0.15 times 0 0.06 plus 0 0.05 times 0 0.09, which gives us 0 0.703, which we can see here. Now, I just quickly want to show you uh, what you learn to AS and how this relates. So in this case, we have three different companies and then it's either defective or it's not defective. So if we were to try and fill this out in a probability tree, then we would have A, B, C, and we'd have defective, not defective, defective, not defective, defective, not defective. So the probability that it was A was 0.8, B is 0.15 and C is 0.05. Then from A that it's defective is 0.04, which means 0.96 of them are fine. 
from B, defective is 0 0.06, which means that not defective is 0 0.94, and C, defective is 0 0.09, and not defective is 0 0.91. So if we were trying to use our AS formula to find the probability of A given D, which would be the probability of A and D over the probability of D, so we would end up with the probability of A and D is going to be 0 0.8 times 0 0.04, because when it's remember when it's and with times going across our probability tree here, divided by, now if we were looking at defective, we would have to look here, here, and here, which means we would have 0 0.8 times 0 0.04, or plus we'd have 0 0.15 times 0 0.06, or, so plus, we'd have 0 0.05 times 0 0.09. And this, you can see here, is exactly the same as what we got when we were using Bayes' theorem. So, if you forget Bayes' theorem, you can go back to using this. You will end up with the same thing, but it just takes a little bit of extra time. And if you're limited on the number of marks that you're getting for the question and the amount of time that you have in the exam, it's a good idea to learn the actual what Bayes' theorem is and how to use it, rather than having to draw out your probability tree then figure out, okay, it's going to be the probability of A and D over the probability of D, and then remembering to include all the ways that it can be defective. Thank you very much for listening.